The abortion pill remains legal right now, remains accessible in states where abortion is legal. I don't need to tell you that this fight is far from over. Illinois is, of course, an abortion safe haven in the Midwest. Take a look at that graphic on your screen. It says so much. What is your state doing ahead of a possible ruling, and what more do you want to see done? Well, I think uh, I'm very proud of Illinois and, um, you know, the stance they've taken, whether it's this or in maternal mortality. Uh, we've been num we were number one in extending the postpartum period that women are very, and moms, very, very uh, important in our state. And I think that if we can just continue in that way and give resources to remain a safe haven, because that's not easy. We have our own women, and then women are coming in from other states. Here's the thing. I wanted to talk to you about black maternal mortality, but I, I don't think I can talk to you about that without also talking about abortion. I mean, maternal mortality rate among industrialized nations, especially for black women, remains extraordinarily high. For me, connect these dots. Explain how restrictions on the abortion pill worsens the crisis. Sure. If women are forced to have children, maternal mortality rates will rise. And they're already high for black women, more so than our white counterparts. So it'll rise even more for black women and um, maybe teen girls, you know. So it is not good. It is not good at all if, uh, if the abortion restrictions continue, whether the abortion restrictions state by state or the um, the pill you just talked about, uh, that will have a devastating effect. When you talk about black maternal mortality and you look at those rates, talk me through what it is that is driving those numbers and what you as a policymaker want to see done in order to begin to move those numbers in a different direction. I was just at a uh, forum today at uh, one of the churches in Chicago, and the bottom line is you have to look at racism as the reason. It doesn't matter if a black woman is wealthy, highly educated, in good condition, uh, she will still die at a higher rate than uh, her white counterpart that has a high school education. So that's definitely part and parcel with it, training that um, doctors and other healthcare professionals give. I was just at a meeting and someone talked about that when they were trained, they were told black women can tolerate more pain. That's a problem. Lack of access to health care in general. So if you have any preconceived existing conditions such as high blood pressure and things like that, that's going to have an effect, as they say, the social determinants of health. But racism is a big part of that. It, we have to deal with that implicit bias uh, that uh, doctors and other health care professionals bring with them, even the person that greets you at the front desk. And to your point about how even if you compare a black woman to someone who has the same level of education, the same socioeconomic status, Serena Williams brought that into such stark relief for so many Americans. Congresswoman Robin Kelly, thank you so much for your time.